Artisan journaling sessions include about 10 minutes of meditation, followed by 10 minutes of art time, 10 minutes of writing with a journal prompt, and conclude with 10 minutes of crafting. All you need for the meditation is yourself. For what follows, you'll want something to write in and with, at minimum. But if you have other art supplies, grab those too. I'll be collaging with some interesting looking papers, stickers, tapes, stuff like that. A quick note on set and setting. I like to add some curios or interesting looking things, maybe some plants and flowers, just to dress my set a little. I also like to have something to sip on, maybe snack on as well, just to round out the experience. Please join me for whatever feels comfortable for you today. The rest will always be here if you want to return to it. The meditation I'd like to practice today is one I call the cycle of becoming, and it involves a four-part visualization. Before we get to it though, I'd like to tune in to the present moment and count 10 breaths. First, we'll become aware of the sensations we feel right now. <sighs> Settle into a comfortable position. Tune into the sounds in your environment. Hold what you see with a soft gaze. Without focusing on any one object in your field of vision, let your attention roam freely over what your senses are taking in, the feelings in your body, and even thoughts and emotions. But try to restrict your attention to the present. If any thought tries to pull you away, Gently guide your attention back to the physical sensations. Let your attention focus now on the sensations in your body in the feet, the legs, relaxing any tension you find along the way, in your seat on the cushion, in your torso, your shoulders, down the arms and into the hands, back up to the neck and the head. Let your face soften. Relax the jaws and let your tongue float up to the back of the front teeth. And bring your awareness now to your breath sensations, but try to keep sounds and body sensations in your peripheral awareness. Find where the breath sensations are clearest for you in this moment. That may be somewhere in the torso, or the mouth, or under the nose. And now we'll count 10 breaths, starting on your next exhale. And keep attending to the breath sensations when you are finished.
The goal of this meditation is to visualize yourself engaging in an activity or practice in your life that is important to you. Then visualize what you put into that practice, what you get out of it, and how it grows from there. I'll start by guiding you through the four-step process, and then you can repeat it with any other practices. So to start, let's pick something easy. How about a meditation practice? Whether you have a regular practice or you're just joining me now, it'll be easy to visualize yourself actually doing the activity since we're doing it. <laughs> so we'll start with both hands folded in the lap and try and visualize yourself practicing meditation as clearly as possible, either in this moment or if you have a regular practice. While you're doing that, whatever cushions you use or seats you use, try and visualize yourself sitting there and practicing. Call up any images and feelings that you associate with practicing. Now extend your right hand with the palm facing up. Keep the image in your mind of you practicing, but begin to imagine what you put into this practice. In this moment, you're investing time and a little energy, hopefully not too much, and you're paying attention. That's a lot to put in. If you have a regular practice, perhaps you put in regular time and attention and at a certain time every day. Maybe you put in your diligence and resolve or knowledge you add from books or tutorials. Now extend your left hand with the palm facing up and imagine what you get back from the practice while keeping the image of you practicing in mind. Right now you may be feeling a sense of relaxation, calm and peace. Perhaps you gain this from your regular practice as well. Perhaps it has helped you to improve your physical or mental health. Try to keep this within the realm of what you currently get back from it and save what you hope to get back for the next part. Now bring both hands together over your heart and try to visualize how this practice can grow the more you put in and get back from it. You can think of it with words or labels, but try to call up images and feelings to go along with those as well. As with all parts of this practice, really try to keep that image of you actually practicing in your mind as you imagine what you hope it will grow into as you keep putting in and getting back from this practice. The power of this practice is in connecting our concrete actions with outcomes. With it, we can try to go past affirmations and visualize a whole cycle of actions, habits, rewards, and growth. Try these four steps with as many other practices as you like, like maybe exercise or your diet, maybe you're studying something or practicing a hobby, and just go through those four parts, but try and really keep in mind concrete actions as you do it. And try and stay within what you currently put into it and currently get out of it before you think of where you hope it will grow from there. Or if you like, you can always return to simply attending to your breath sensations for the remainder of this meditation.
The art prompt I'll be doing today is on page 48 of the Artisan Spring Journal, but you can also follow along with just some blank paper. Before beginning, I've selected the colors I'd like to use so that I have a limited palette to work with. The line art I'll be doing today is this mandala of unfurling leaves and buds. For this, I've picked some soft greens and pinks that remind me of young shoots and new buds. I'll begin by outlining areas so I can decide what colors I'd like to use for different parts. I also have another quote for today that I find lines up with the different parts of today's prompts. When asked for advice by New York high school students in a letter, the writer Kurt Vonnegut replied, practice any art, music, singing, dancing, acting, drawing, painting, sculpting, poetry, fiction, essays, reportage, no matter how well or how badly, not to get money or fame, but to experience becoming, to find out what's inside you, to make your soul grow. This piece seems to be growing outwards. These leaves and buds are getting their chance to experience becoming. How do you experience becoming? What is important for you to become? Are you experiencing becoming something right now, in a big or small way? What is your coloring becoming? Do you have any positive or negative feelings coming up as you work? Like last time, I invite you to explore any feelings with curiosity and try not to judge anything as being good or bad. Simply note that it exists. You don't have to try and change or shape it. You can simply let it be or let it go. By choosing to let something move on, we can practice some gentle gardening in our minds. Nothing needs to be uprooted or weeded out. We can simply nurture what it is we'd like to grow.
I'll use similar colors in pencil to fill in areas from here on out. As I color, if I find myself getting distracted by a thought, I can actually stop what I'm doing to let the thought come and go. Then, I can use the sensation of my hand on the paper as an anchor to bring my attention back to what I'm doing. I'll take a quick moment to reward myself mentally for remembering to focus on the drawing. It's not important that my mind wanders at any point. What's important is remembering to refocus. That is the practice that leads to mindfulness. I'll repeat this process with any other distracting thoughts. Stop, refocus, reward.
Our writing prompt today is how can you motivate yourself to go outside even when it's chilly and or rainy? You can use the time writing out the question itself to think it over. If you think of anything, jot down some bullet points underneath. Motivation is about knowing your why. So why would you want to go outside on chilly, rainy days? It's also about emotion. So what emotions do you feel when it's chilly or rainy out? There are no wrong answers here. We're asking the question and writing about it to, as Kurt says, find out what's inside you. You may find that you don't have any reasons why you'd want to go outside when it's chilly and wet. You may find that there are no good emotions you associate with that. I'd certainly prefer to go out when it's sunny and warm, but there may come a reason that drives me past those emotions, so I think it can help to explore them a little. What's wrong with getting wet? Is it that your hair or outfit will get ruined? Could you catch a cold? Do some of your joints ache in this weather? Those are all valid reasons to want to stay inside.
Are there any external supports you could use to make life easier? A good raincoat and umbrella maybe? Some rain pants even? I have a pair. Some wool clothing can help as well, since wool will keep you warm even if it gets wet. Think of all the little sheep who huddle together against the rain. They're kept warm by their wool. You can do them one better by adding a good raincoat over top. Are there any internal supports you can muster to motivate yourself to go outside? This is the beginning of spring, and spring goes from cold and rainy to more pleasant weather that's also often rainy. But it's not summer yet. Are some of your negative emotions about spring actually anticipation or even impatience for summer? Can you learn to appreciate spring for what it is and what the rain brings? There's no growth without rain in nature, no summer without this period of washing away the winter and soaking the ground so that things can grow. What needs to be cleared away inside you so that you can grow? Remember, we're not writing anything in stone here. You can always come back to this question later, or even in a future journal entry. As with the art parts, I'll try to use the sensations of my hands working to refocus my attention if I find myself drifting off. Not all mind wandering is bad, mind you. I just want to keep it wandering within this present moment, this journal prompt, what I'm doing, and these themes of growth. Now, 
Taking from my art and writing prompts, I looked for some papers and stickers and tapes that followed these themes of growth, rain, motivation, and internal growth. And also colors that fit the palette that I had set out in the beginning. I'll take some time now to try out a few compositions and see what I'd like to place where. As I do this, I like to keep in mind where I'll want to add some color with tape and where I can create some overlapping areas for contrast and interest. One of the principles of composition that I like to keep in mind is that you can create a sense of flow within a piece by having all the focal points lead back to within the center of the piece. That means that people look inwards rather than outwards, and that any triangle shapes go in rather than out, and so on. Connecting back to our theme of growth, looking inwards, especially within a journal practice, can lead to growth. But there needs to be some overlap as well. We need to take elements from the outside to use for this personal reflection. Our inside world reflects our outside world. I also like to try and keep some negative space in places, trying to make some areas more busy and others more neat. Just as in real life, growth needs space just as much as it needs busyness. We grow through our practices, but we also need spaces between to contemplate them and rest times to allow us to absorb what we've done.
I've prepped my stickers by peeling the backs off a little bit, since that can take me quite a while to do with my short nails. Again, if I get distracted by anything that pulls me away from my composition, I can actually physically stop what I'm doing and use the sensations in my hands or even take another 10 breaths to ground myself back in the present moment. The soul is an ineffable thing, meaning there are no words to describe it. But that doesn't mean we can't try to describe it, or represent it, or the things that make it grow. Using images or even simple colors and forms gives us another way to connect with our psyche or soul or whatever you want to call it, and show how it grows. I hope you try this practice with me again next week. I'd also invite you to try a practice on your own where you call all the shots. Put on some music, pick something to draw or color, something to write about, some things to arrange, and skip anything you don't feel like doing. I also invite you to think of how you can take some of this practice into different parts of your life. Can you use the visualization exercise from our meditation to envision growth through your practices? Can you take from Kurt Vonnegut's quote and think about what is important for you to experience becoming? How can you keep finding out what's inside you? How do you, the unique one-of-a-kind person that you are, how do you make your soul grow? And how can you keep growing even through those periods of your life that might be a bit chillier or rainy, can you use those times to grow even more? Until next time.